that was absurd to be your first tour because I definitely wasn't ready for that but I was thrown in the gauntlet and made it happen and made it work um but I did really well and I think agents after that took notice and then I was booked on other tours and it kind of spiraled from there Yeah, great to see you as well. Um, so this is about you and in your journey in music. We got kind of your story the first time, but I'd love to kind of recap a bit of that and then talk about what you have had going on and what you got going yeah. on uh, since pretty much, I know, the past so, yeah, couple of years. Yeah, I guess that's <laughs> been a while. Um, I've been uh, lucky enough to release a lot of music since then. Um, I had a EP come out and a bunch mm -hmm. of other singles. And last year was a really exciting year for features on other big DJs songs. So I had the one with Dylan and Elenium, Lewis yeah. the Child, um, just a lot of big records that have been really fun to play out live and also just spread my name around, you know, in this like electronic community. So that's opened a lot of doors and um, I've just gained a lot of new fans from all of their, their circles. So really happy about all the feature stuff. Um, I've been holed away for about four months now writing kind of the new era. I feel like it's, you know, you kind of run its course with the past couple years and the music and all the stuff in my live set and I'm just ready to revamp everything. And that'll be this year, which is really exciting. Um, I am newly figuring out stuff for releases and without going into too much detail, I'm now able to kind of chart my own course and wow, I will exciting. be doing an EP and I will be doing an album soon after. So I'm excited to kind of find my freedom there and make you know, all these decisions, which is just so freeing, so exciting. And so just creatively um, opening a ton of doors. So that yeah. is amazing. Congratulations on all of that. It's so cool. Thank um, you. Yeah. So, well, uh, I mean, I remember from last time you were, you're from like what, 30 minutes outside of Boston area. I am. Yeah. Okay. So we didn't really talk about uh, much about how you got into music. I know we talked about how you sang opera for a, hand, a number of years. Um, but like, do you come from a musical household at all? We never really chatted about that. Yeah, no, crazily enough. Um, I think something like my great grandmother on my dad's side was an opera singer, which was good to know because my parents are always so just confused where this came from. Um, <laughs> but I did. I started uh, about like, I guess that was like five years old. I started taking voice lessons. My teacher kind of took a notice to me and she was like, I think we should keep this up. And then I started studying classically for 10 years. Um, I'm still in weekly voice lessons and the majority of my training and studies are in classical opera. So uh, that's one of my big points of the revamp of the new music is adding that side of my voice into my music. So oh, it's really, that's I'm awesome. trying my best to kind of like in a cool way, bring opera and electronic together. So that is awesome. Yeah. You, you said that you, you know, you kind of did that for a handful of like 10 years or something like that, but at five years old, were you just interested or were you the kid that was always kind of performing around the house and singing? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Like in the school plays in choir in bands and just performing and dancing and making people watch me and film me. So <laughs> I think it was all meant to be in that way. And then the classical thing came from this one teacher that believed in me. She kind of was like, this is the route you should go down. Right before I went to Berkeley College of Music, I had to make the decision if I want to go contemporary or stay in that classical lane. And I decided to go to Berkeley and kind of switch gears and learn a little bit more and train my voice in more contemporary style, like pop. So it's been awesome, but I... Actually, as I get older, the more I want to come back down to my roots, my classical roots and like use it because it is such like a unique talent. So, <laughs> right. I mean, especially opera, being able to sing in a to like different languages and just like yeah. the, the amount of talent and the strength of your voice has to be incredible to be able to to, to sing. It's that. been awesome for just my live show endurance as well. Um, I just I able to keep up for an hour while jumping around and, and, you know, I don't stand and sing. I'm like whipping my hair and going crazy. And it's a lot uh, to keep your technique in shape, but I'm, you know, work, I work on it weekly and I take it really seriously. So, yeah. 
That's awesome. Did you play in, you, you said bands, were you in bands in school? Or so funny mean, because like, I just okay. found these videos on YouTube two nights ago. One of my friends sent them. I was in a band in high school um, <laughs> and I was the lead singer and like, oh my God. I mean, it gives you so much perspective to watch those back. Like I was barely <laughs> moving, clearly so nervous, but to me, those are kind of like the epitome of my life. Like I really remember vividly doing those performances for the whole school. And I really found my identity there. I was like, this is, this is where I'm meant to be. I need to be on stage. So were you doing covers or were you covers? Yeah. Songs? Okay. Covers. All covers definitely wasn't a songwriter until after I graduated Berkeley. Um, but fun to like choose the ones that work best for my voice. And like, to be honest, I, as things grow, grow with Evan G, I'd love to add more people on stage with me. Right now, it's like one woman show, kind of like a DJ set. Um, but I miss, you know, the vibe between instrumentalists while you're performing. Like, it's just really cool. So, yeah. Did you play like you did talent shows and stuff like that for the school? I did. I tried out for American Idol. I did talent yeah, right. shows. I did everything that. in the Boston area. So like I did also um, competitions on the weekend for classical, which is a whole different community and world. So every week we'd be driving like three hours to a competition and I won a lot of great prizes and I went to huge intensive camps on the week on the summer. So yeah, long story short, I'm just, I'm glad I'm still doing it because it was a huge part of my life. So mm. I remember you saying uh, last time that you, when you got to Berkeley, you told me about changing up to more contemporary voice. Yeah. Uh, but also you ended up graduating, right? With a business, music business degree. Yes. Music business. I, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I did, you know, I liked Berkeley, but I did feel like it was a bit just creatively stunting. I think it was really competitive and didn't really lend, at least for my personality, it didn't work well for me to be like pinned up against people and they give you a number and you're one through five. And I'm just, oh wow, it was just not the environment that I thrive in. So I decided, you know, hey, maybe we just get something concrete out of this. So I got my music business degree, which has been awesome because I'm able to, you know, it's one of the biggest parts of my business. Like I'm on every call with my management, my label, I'm mm -hmm. creating all of these things. I'm part of negotiations and I know a lot. So it's been right. Helpful. Yeah. You come in at more of a, you know, confident in that aspect. Like they yeah. can't just be like, Oh, this is the best deal. You're like, well, yeah, uh, no, no, let's see. And here. don't get me wrong. Still like mistakes along the way, learning so much every year. I'm like, Oh, but I, I finally feel like I'm in a position where I'm like, okay, I get all of this now and I'm able to, make the best decisions going forward but you have to go through all that those weird contracts those weird little hiccups like mm -hmm. to get to the best place possible so yeah yeah that's just i i find that interesting with with berkeley kind of pitting people against each other in the sense that like i feel like music would be more of a collaborative thing like you want to learn how if you're especially if you're going to do it as a career you'd want to learn how to like co-write or work with other people instead of being like well, you're a two and you're a five. So yeah, like, I don't know. I, I don't always know. just felt like it was the opposite of what music was for me. Cause I think right. it can't be objective. It's subjective. It's however you're feeling, however anyone's feeling. So, and there's something a voice for everyone. I really do believe that. So if you're you enough, people will gravitate towards it. And that's what I learned after graduating. Um, but some people thrived in that situation and it's good for them. But for me, I was like, what is going on? This is right. not like I came very much like big fish, small pond and then the reverse. <laughs> mm -hmm. So did you want like uh, going there? Obviously, you're going for, for voice or in the beginning, at least like what was did you want to? I don't know. Is this always been your dream to be a singer or be an artist? Like, was that always kind of like the end result that you were looking for? I knew that I needed to be singing because it's just more of, like I said before, like an identity thing for me where like I am a singer. So it was just like mm -hmm. whatever I'm doing in that world. But as Berkeley went on, I started to believe less and less that that's something I was actually going to do professionally. Um, mm -hmm. I actually graduated and did a million internships with Atlantic Records and different management companies in both New York and LA. Um, I was thinking for sure I'd be close to the artist, and, but like, you know, supporting them on the business side, and not the being end, the yeah. artist. Um, so I would say my meeting my husband in New York was the big switch because he's like, let's, you're good. Like, let's write, you know? And then he kind of encouraged me to be like, let's actually try this. So I 
quickly was like, you know, maybe I can. And then I started getting gigs and then the confidence came and I was like, I realized this is what it was meant to be the whole time. I just kind of lost my way for a few years. <laughs> yeah. Well, congratulations on the marriage. I know you guys were engaged. Last Thank you. We talked, so oh that's my God. Cool. That's so wild. Yeah. A wedding's <laughs> already happened. I've been married for about almost two, two years, a year and a half. So oh, wow. I didn't want to ask because if it went the other route, I didn't want to. I know. Like yikes. Asshole. That would not have been great. <laughs> You're like, Luckily, well, everything uh... is very happy. <laughs> we're like very happily married. Thank God. That's cool. And you started. You, I believe you told me um, he was the first person you ever wrote with, right? That's kind of where you started writing, being a yeah. songwriter. Honestly, everything traces back to him. I had never written a song before. Um, I, we recently listened to a few of the first ones and I'm just like, okay. I mean, you got to start somewhere. Um, right, yeah. But I think, yeah, he gave me kind of, he was doing the exact same thing. He had just graduated UVA with a master's in engineering. He's super smart. Wow. And he was like, we either go one route or the other. Let's, let's try this. And I was like, all right. And we did. And I'm so glad we did because he's now my main collaborator, collaborator still like pretty much, I would say 95% of my songs are produced by Memba. Um, so. Wow. Nice. That's awesome. Especially to have that. I mean, as over the course of the last few years as well not being able to you know maybe work with people as close at least you know a yeah couple of years ago no exactly your, i felt so lucky to have it <laughs> your producer just, like baked in you know right, and we're sitting right. in my studio this is our house um the second uh bedroom in our apartment in brooklyn and so everything's just straight from here like i don't need to go anywhere to mix to master to record i, I feel so grateful for that so that's amazing with uh, those first, like writing those first songs with him, um, what was like, what was like the first, you know, kind of validating moment for you might have even been for the two of you as songwriters or uh, writing music um, for, for, for your project? Like, was there obviously, um, you know, Westworld became a, a big, big song for you. But before that, was there a moment that kind of led into that or something that had happened um, prior to that Honestly, being like, like, oh, this is this is working. Let's keep going forward. Westworld was definitely the first signal that we might be able to actually do this and that it's working. I think not even it's released, but Odessa reaching out to us and mm -hmm. validating, like, we think the song is really dope. Can we put it on our label? Like that moment we were like, uh, okay. Oh my God. Like we, <laughs> and I was the biggest Odessa fan in the world at that moment. So that was a very full circle, like really eye opening thing for me. Um, and I, th before then we were truly, you know, like making music on Saturdays, like purely, and I miss those times. I'm not going to lie. Like just for no reason other mm. than to create, um, there's no pressure, there's no deadlines, there's no expectation. Uh, uh, actually now I'm 31. It's been like what, four years or five, four and a half years since then. Like, I feel like I'm finally getting back to that place. I think you have to like come full circle to get back to that place to just be writing to write and enjoying the process and I think that's where hits come from like Westworld where you're being genuine and you're just in it because mm -hmm. you're in it not for any other reason so yeah so that was the one that kind of changed because you had a couple songs prior to that obviously um, I but also did, did those well, are right? all some on like SoundCloud and you well, know wasn't Hype like, Machine giving you some love too before because true you're I mean, reminding that was a me big of things deal, I just right? don't remember I mean, Hype, yeah. if you're number one on Hype Machine I believe Westworld was number one on Hype Machine wasn't it it got number one yeah, yeah. but even to have any song get recognized in that list back then was no, like you're getting right. a Spotify, you know, editorial playlist or something. It was like people so were getting a viral TikTok moment. I mean, that was what labels were looking at and, and looking and being like, oh my, who's this person? Like they have a huge hit on Hype Machine. No, you're, this is, I like doing these things because it makes me go back. I think as a human, you're constantly like, okay, what's next? Okay, what's next? Oh, and I course, forget, right, yeah. I forget <laughs> those moments that were really cool. And like, honestly, yeah, those, those were kind of the equivalent of a little bit of a viral moment for the song. So that's awesome. And like that song is still my baby and it still keeps me rocking. We're still like, even just, just on Spotify, it's like 40,000 streams a day. So I'm like, people are still finding that song and DMing me and being like, what is this? And I'm like, really? So I guess that's how it works. <laughs> but <laughs> Sure. Sure. Wow. Um, so then, yeah, that becomes a big song and you do your first, what tour was with, 
uh, with them, right? With Odessa, Odessa yeah, which yeah. was wild. I was first of three on their arena tour, and that was absurd to be your first tour because I definitely wasn't ready for that. But I was thrown in the gauntlet and made it happen and made it work. Um, but I did really well, and I think agents after that took notice, and then I was booked on other tours, and it kind of spiraled from there. Sure. And you did. Um, I remember you said last time, like, I, don't, I don't know if you're still at the same level, at least I won't mention it, but um, you played what the M3F Fest and that's kind of what got you talking with, I believe it was the label or a booking agent or something. Oh my God. So you're reminding me of everything. Yeah. That was the first one they had come to, to kind of scope me out um, Capitol records. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll leave that at that for now, but it's crazy because it's full circle and playing F- M3F in two weeks this year. Yeah, so I wanted to talk to you about that. It was kind and of now really... it's like main stage, better slot, you know, bigger slot and probably a lot more people there. I had about like, I think like, I don't know, 25, but then it ended up being like 50 at my other set, which was like first festival I'd ever done. I was so nervous. It'll be cool to go back this year because I'll just be in a totally different place. So yeah. Is this the second time you've done it then so this one second time yeah it's just wow that's huge. four years in between which is really cool <laughs> but to see you know that was the moment it, you started getting eyes on you at that point exactly. and to have that the, you know the smaller crowd because you're the lower out on the bill or whatever but then yeah come back i played and now at on the like, main stage and now I think like 1 p.m and now it's like 8 p.m so it's it's exciting <laughs> that's really exciting um like we said you put out the, the focus the acoustic version was the last time I spoke with you. And I think you okay. were working with Haley Knox or something on the song. Uh, yeah. Have you been um, keeping up with Haley now? She's yeah, I actually had it. her on. I, yeah, I've had her on our podcast before. Oh, okay, that. cool. Yeah. Because, right, it's funny. It's, yeah, it's funny how things like evolve. She's on TikTok right now, literally like four million like views each video. Yeah, She's it's insane. hitting her absolute stride. I just reached out to her to write a new song. So I'm like, dude what you're on fire so um i'd love to collab with her again Uh uh-huh and you guys had like had a re because obviously your songs aren't written acoustic i mean it's more of the electronic no and honestly that's the first and only acoustic we've done um and i want to do more like that i really this year i'm like trying to like strip down to like the vocal vocals and you can really only hear that if you take it all back a notch and maybe just piano or guitar so i'm going to play with that a lot with my live set as well because i think it's just fun to like have people actually i think there's like a bit of a stigma with like electronic vocalists like they're not you know fully out there like noticeable for their voice like singing Mm -hmm. singing and i want i want to like strip it back and show the range and some of the classical stuff behind you know my technique so yeah no i and i and i feel that as well because you'll see or i'll see artists that will you know they'll start off beating by getting like a top line vocal on a edm song right and then like their career will kind of build out of that and it's like i feel like some of those singers aren't getting the respect they should because they're obviously for sure singers and it's like oh well you're just the voice on the whatever you're just a slushy song or whatever yeah yeah exactly (laughs) like i just don't want to i from the beginning i was like i don't that's never been my goal to be a feature artist like i want if i i'm now like very selective of the ones i choose because a lot of them come in and i'm like I want to choose the ones that make the most sense for like visibility, but then if they click on my name, I want them to see, Oh, look, she has a full catalog. Like she's right. She's her own artist. She's the artist. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Cause the, the, was the most recent one you did was that with, uh, the don't let me go. What, don't let me go. That, that was the most recent. Song that's the most done? recent. Yeah. yeah. Last year. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Cause that's a great song, but it, you're also, you're featured with, you know, two, two really talented people. As well. Yeah. I got lucky and you know, I got to do like, like very very large festivals main stage main slot with pyro shooting in my face (laughs) like singing on standing on the dj decks of millennium so like those that's what those songs bring me so i think it's always been like a smart you know business move to add those in a few times but also have my own eps and my own singles and yeah yeah, because you didn't you hadn't released your EP yet when, when I spoke. No, to you. no, I don't even think was... any of those songs even are on your EP. No, right? you none put of a those whole EP. Are. Yeah. So you had so you went from because it were, it was in the middle of quarantine. 
And I remember you had like your first headline tour booked and everything was going to rock and then it got yeah. pulled away. But I did see that you played, you've done it. You just did a headline little run, right? You I did a little run. November. Yep. Yeah. It was great. Um, the momentum tour I did, uh, like eight, eight shows, which was awesome to kind of get back out there, but also in markets I'd never done before. I've done the San Francisco's New York's whatever a million times. Mm -hmm. And these were the fun, like Nashville's and Austin. And it was cool to see how like the Phillies show up for you, you know, like right. that was really validating. Um, and then this year, tons more festivals on the lineup already i'm getting them like offers come in as we speak which is so exciting because oh, honestly yeah. like those just the energy for those are just my favorite i just love a summer day like at 5 p.m sunset slot with all these kids who are so happy to be there it's the best and yeah I, you got a governor's ball right is one of the ones that yeah you i'm put out. Like, so I mean, that's insane. proud and excited about that um i have outside lands this year like Oh, that's a great um, festival. I lived in San Francisco for a handful of years. I love that festival. Yeah, I'm so stoked for that. Um, the Okeechobee, which is coming up really soon, will be fun because I'm doing the foreign family stage. So like all my friends will be there. Oh, awesome. Odez is playing. It'll be a big reunion for us. Yeah, that so. was your first label, right? They were the ones that ended yeah, up putting out Yeah, they the did. First Westworld. And Westworld, yeah. What You Need and one other song. So, um, and those ones still keep rocking. Like everybody loves those ones still. So I think a lot of the foreign family fans will be there. It'll be fun. That's amazing. Um, I remember you telling me also that, well, your brother worked with you on one of the songs, right? What's my temperature? What's your temperature? Yeah, he did. And, and then he did, he was shooting the video uh, also, right? Yeah, For he worked pretty much. He was like my, he was my tour manager, my video editor and director and help with brainstorming and songwriting. He did it all. He did it all for about, three years and when was that honestly like exactly a year ago he had to move on and do his own thing oh, okay yeah because so he did tiny sad. life did he keep did he keep doing videos for you after that one or was that kind of he was one? on set for all of them that was the only one he directed because we were in quarantine so like i couldn't go to a shoot um but he's yeah. been on set for all of them helping me edit it, everything but yeah, he just started his own clothing brand, which is really exciting. So he's in the creative space as well. But I had to like kind of let him have his own wings and fly. I was really sad, but yeah. it it's just fun to have your brother on the road with you, right? Like after the shows, we're like vibing in the hotel room, eating our Snickers and having fun. It's you're really comfortable. So um, I'll always miss him in that role. But it's been fun to just be like brother and sister again because we were working a lot before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you put out because endorphins was the EP and once is so from putting doing that video um, and then to, to that EP coming out, was it just were you writing that EP during? Yeah, I early par parts of COVID or like when did that? Honestly, when did like on that? right when things started to become like somewhat normal, but we still kind of stayed inside because touring wasn't normal is when we got to write that EP, which is awesome. It was a good time to hunker down and finish something. I finished the EP and went straight on tour with Lewis the Child for like oh, 23 wow. dates, which was huge. That was the whole summer and it dropped right at the end. And right when it dropped, I flew home, I got married and then went back out on tour. So it was a really busy summer. <laughs> oh my gosh. And then, so when you came, like you've put out even a couple songs recently aside from the, the features you had rabbit yeah hole, which rabbit was hole momentum. and momentum you do the the run with momentum um do you have like like for like right now like when did you like momentum you just did the tour so that song's new but like is that all going to be part of another project coming out like have you do you have it, more songs ready to go no those are one-offs i will keep them there um i have like three songs that I believe are the singles, hopefully tentatively March, April, June. And then honestly, I'm in between deciding because I just have so much music and I'm finally in a position where I can actually put it out. So I, I might even like screw around and put out like 10 songs, 15 songs, like in one <laughs> body of work. Like I'm just excited to finally have just my fans get the songs that they want because there's just so many in the pipeline I didn't get to release that they keep DMing me about like what about this one what about this one and oh, I'm ready like to stuff that you've played live and they know yes they know like, it where's the song why haven't you put it. it out yet and it 
for whatever reason got pushed to the background and I'm excited to like rebirth all of those. Um, but I've been teasing two songs, one called Skin Routine and one called Down to Earth on my TikTok. And those will probably be the next singles. I'm really stoked on both of them. And they're very within my brand. Like Skin Routine is just my whole vibe. I probably my most asked question is what's your skin routine? So I flipped it around and made a song about it. So do you um, discuss your skin routine or is it just totally not relevant to that whatsoever? It's like basically the whole song, like idea behind it is like being a badass while taking care of yourself rather than like, let's go out party. It's like, go to bed early, hydrate, do your skincare routine. Cause that's <laughs> genuinely me. Like I'm a grandma, like I, but I find it your your best self and your most badass self when you're taking care of your mind and body and Mm -hmm. moving and so yeah that's awesome you talked about earlier just saying that you're kind of trying to incorporate more of that classical style you grew up with into these songs like um will that be within these new two that you're talking about or like yeah so did you start kind of uh like i guess explain that a little bit to me i'm just yeah for sure they'll be introduced like that sound will be introduced in many different ways, Part partly like ad libs behind me that are very like beautiful and floating. Partly I'll be singing like a verse and then my pre-chorus will go super high up in my range and be really floaty. Um, and then uh, as well in my live set, I have tons of ideas. This year I rejiggered my whole live set and my intro, I stepped out on stage, completely blacked out one spotlight on me and I sang a full German aria. And then it went wow. right into momentum. So it, the beat mixes into momentum slowly and then you start hearing it. So it's always my dream to like make this beautiful intro that just has your like, you're like, what the hell is going on? And then it drops into some really, really banging beats, which so I, we're trying to meld that with the music right now. <laughs> that is so cool. And you're still working with your husband then on the song? I am. This will be mainly... Um, with Mamba for this EP and these new songs are both by them. Uh, but I'm actually headed to LA next week to work with a bunch of artists like Mark Kismet and um, Nostalgics and San Holo just to kind of get some new new songs out there and some new fresh production as well as Mamba. That's cool. Um, and you've been, you said you've been writing in your house. I mean, you have an extra room there in your house just to really focus on this. Is yeah, that something I'd... you can go to? Like, are you, one of those people that just constantly is writing like oh I got an idea I gotta go like honestly I never used to be and since January I I don't know I flipped the script like now I am now I have I'm I think my creative like chakra the top just opened I have so many melodies so many lyrics and so many ideas so I've been shocking my husband like writing till 2 a.m and coming out and being like what time is it he's like what the hell you just went into a wormhole (laughs) um so I feel really inspired right now. So I do. I write almost every day. That's awesome. And you've got the the festivals coming up. Um, did you, have you had a chance? I mean, those dates that you did, like Nashville, Austin, those ones you mentioned, those were headlining shows. Was that your, was that kind of like your headlining tour? Did you have a chance to make up that one that you had planned that you kind of lost? That was pretty much it, which is a bummer. Like I obviously, you know, would love for many more of those. Um mm-hmm. But I actually did one in between the endorphins tour, which was to make up for the one I didn't do in COVID, which was amazing in New York and San Francisco and all the big places, Seattle, um, which went beautifully. And I played all of the records from that EP and it was amazing. So this was the follow up of that. And last year was a massive festival year for me. I did EBC Vegas. I did Electra Forest. I did pretty much all of the big ones. I was away every single weekend. So This year will be a lot of focus on the music rather than the live performance. Okay. And I know you, you mentioned last time that that's like one of your favorite aspects of it, the the live. I love it. And when my agent told me that he's like, okay, we got to like, you know, I still have a million offers that are happening this year, but it's a lot less than last year. So he's like, now let's like get focused on this EP and stuff. And I'm like, what? No. Cause I love I love being away every weekend and doing a show. It just makes me feel energized and I get to like directly see the people singing the music. It is just really validating for me. So that's awesome. Well, I appreciate you doing this again and, and catching up with me and 
Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, Thank yeah. you so much for having me. Yeah. I have one more quick question. I want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists. I would say uh, there's, it's a long and winding road um, and it's meant to be that way. So just trust that even when there's times where you're like, uh, I don't really understand what's going on or I'm stuck in a bad situation. Like it's, there's always like another sunrise moment <laughs> and it's never going to be like, oh, it's perfect here for the forever. Like it'll dip and then I'll go back up, but better than you were before. So, and also these type of things are so important. The perspective is so like all, everything you mentioned today, I'm, I'm like, oh my God, I forgot about that. So look back take stock and be proud because if you don't do that there's really no point in all of this